How to create great professional quality colour inkjet prints in three easy stages. Step one, use a photo quality pigment inkjet printer with good quality inks and papers. Two, use a recent custom printer profile that you've had checked, uh, which has been created specifically for your printer, your ink and your particular paper. And three, Print out from great origination and don't ruin it with over adjustment in Photoshop, Lightroom and don't allow your monitor to persuade you to over adjust or over sharpen. Let's explain step one. Now don't use a cheap home or office printer. Don't use older die based printers or a printer which is unable to deliver consistent ink flows. Your nozzle check printout should be perfect any time. If it's not, get your printer serviced or service it yourself. We have great videos on our websites which will show you how. Use only a, a modern pigment inkjet printer which creates accurate colours uh, which lift off early and graduate smoothly up to the colour of your paper which should be a nice, crisp, clean white. Pigment inks tend to deliver more accurate neutrals, even in varying lighting conditions. Don't use compatible inks or cheap high street refill inks. Use either OEM brand inks or a reputable professional photographic ink. Don't use low quality papers, which often won't allow you to achieve a good rich black which is essential if you want to produce punchy, vibrant colour prints. Insist on professional photographic inkjet papers with a clean, pure white uh, as a base colour, which have the correct coating, which allows your inks to graduate smoothly through the entire density range in each colour channel. Uh, compatibles and cheap high street refill inks tend to produce abrupt high contrast prints which often lack a smooth response curve so my advice is to stay clear. Now step two, get your printer accurately custom profiled for your specific printer, ink and paper combination and check it regularly. I would advise at least once a month uh, against an accurate calibrated print. So this is the print that you'd print out for your test target. You'd submit that to your supplier and they would send you back a custom profile and then you print out a standard image. And this is a print of our particular standard image that we can, that we can criticize. Now we download this same image and we check that we get good agreement between the print that you are going to produce and the print that let's say we have provided for you. Now let's analyze this image. We're looking for a good rich black. We're looking for the clean pure white of the paper. Uh, we're also uh, looking for the primary colors to achieve their correct saturation and to graduate smoothly all the way through. And we want them to graduate at the same level, which means to say we want the midpoint to occur at the same place. And we want it, the graduations to, to have no lumps or bumps in the, in the graduations themselves. Now, we don't want to exaggerate colour, but we don't want to under, uh, understate colour either. We want to capture uh, 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 exactly the colours that you that you've actually captured. Now I advise that you use Adobe RGB 1998 as your working colour space. Uh, I would advise you not to use sRGB because it tends to limit your overall range of colours. Now that's a little bit controversial but uh, this is my uh, opinion that you should use Adobe RGB 1998. Um, now, once you're completely confident that your printer is accurate for colour and density, you can then adjust your monitor manually to agree to your print um, when viewed in correct daylight conditions, which in this case I would advise would be 5000 degrees Kelvin. 
Now, we want to work with the right amount of uh, uh, pixels uh, and dynamic range, which means that an origination image which exceeds, say, five megabytes uh, is fine for when you're printing A5 or half US letter size. Now, 10 megabytes, I would advise, or thereabouts, is correct when printing to A4 or a full US letter size. And make sure that your levels show a good spread of density tones appropriate to your image. Print straight from a digital camera, a TIFF or higher quality JPEG uh, whenever you can. Rather than uh, a scan from a print or a transparency. Don't get hung up on the complications of processing through RAW. If you don't understand the principles, just keep it simple. Now, don't allow your monitor to persuade you to over adjust in Photoshop. Try printing, uh, 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 try printing a first off test print full size without any Photoshop adjustments, just straight from the camera. See what you've achieved. Then apply ch tiny changes as you wish based on your first off print, not what you see on the monitor. When you get used to this method, you will be able to use smaller and fewer test prints to get to the print you really want. Your printer uh, is, is way more sensitive to fine adjustments than your monitor is capable of, of, uh, of conveying to you. Now, once you really feel in control of your colour printing, I would advise you to enjoy yourself. Now, if you've enjoyed this presentation, pass this on to your colleagues and your photo friends. Thanks for looking.